Hey, I'm Matt, today I want to show you five small tools every woodworker should have in their shop. And if you stick around, I give you a bonus of one that's insanely expensive, but I love it anyway, kind of like my wife. If you don't pick up any other tool on this list, get one of these for your shop or your toolbox. This is a right angle drill attachment. It's actually designed for impacts like that. It even says impact ready on the box. However, you can use it in a regular drill. It'll work exactly the same. There's actually several brands or makes of these. This is actually an older model. It still works perfectly fine. I just picked up the new model just to show you what the new one looks like. So the way this works is it attaches to your drill or your impact in here, and then you can attach any bit that you want. I use this a lot for pocket holes when I get into a tight space and I can't fit a pocket hole driver bit because they're so long into a space. But there's a knuckle joint in there that turns. It helps everything just turn the same. If I needed to drive a screw up into this tight space, my regular drill won't even fit in there. I can use this right angle adapter to get in there. You even still get the impact that you still get that through this front 90 degree adapter. There's a multitude of uses for this little tool. And if you don't have one, I guarantee you, if you go buy it the next time you need it in a tight space, you're gonna come back to this video and comment and thank me for showing you this. If you're interested in any of the tools you see in this video today, there'll be a link in the description below to each one. Sticking with a the drill theme, I've got this center punch. It's a spring-loaded center punch or nail set. Uh, these things are awesome to have in the shop. Let me show you. If you've ever been trying to drill a hole in a specific spot and you put your drill bit on there and it starts walking around, this will fix that. All you do is set it on there. Whoop. All you do is set it on there and just push down. And it, that click you hear is actually the spring popping it into place. You see that mark that it made. When you go to drill, your drill bit has a reference to start on and it's not gonna walk on you. So this thing has a sharp point on it that it goes down to so that you can actually set where you actually need to make the hole. That's the whole thing about this thing. It helps you make precise spots to put a hole. That way you don't mess up. You don't get your drawer pulls out of level. It doesn't look like crap. I've actually used these two mark where I'm going to drill holes for drawer pulls and things like that. I actually use it on the workbench as you see here. Also on the closet built-ins, I use this to set where I was going to pre-drill for those drawer pulls. Good starter spot. It is even sitting in there securely now. It's not going to move and wiggle out of there. They're cheap and you'll like having it in the shop. This video is brought to you by 731woodworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. If you use the code SMALLTOOL, you'll get 20% off any order. If you combine that code with one of these three bundles, that'll save you even more because those bundles are already discounted. Number three on the list, Gator Lift. If you use sheet goods, plywood, MDF, anything like that, this thing will help you, especially if you work alone like I do most of the time, I'm having to move the sheet goods around the shop by myself or even from the truck to the shop or even from the store to the truck. So if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can take this with you to help you load sheet goods onto a cart so that it makes it just easier for you. Let me show you how it works. So typically if you're picking up sheet goods, how do you do it by yourself? Most of us bend down, grab the end and try to waller it around onto the table or onto the table saw like you see here. I just, you get in a bind I'm extremely a bind. easy and fast with such a bulky piece of wood. And they're not light, especially MDF. This is a 5 8 inch sheet of MDF. 5 8 even by itself is pretty heavy. This thing has two grip pads on the inside. They're rubber, kind of sticky feeling. All you do is slip it onto the sheet and then pick up. <laughs> that is so much easier than trying to wrestle this thing with both hands. Now I can just maneuver this around the shop. Is it heavy? I mean, I'm holding a whole sheet of plywood or a whole sheet of MDF with one arm. It's not light, but it's manageable. And that's what this thing does. It helps you manage sheet goods by yourself. To get it off, once you put, let it, the sheet good down, all you do is pick it up and it comes right off. It just creates a pinch or, or tension on the sheet when you pick it up. If you've got two of these and two people, then you could have one on each end to make it that much easier for you working with sheet goods, trying to carry them on the job site or in your shop. Comment below, let me know what your favorite small tool is you have in your shop.
Number four on the list is the Masca Twin Jig. If you're a beginner woodworker on a budget, the Masca Twin Pocket Hole Jig is one of the most affordable jigs you can get to get you started making projects. I'll drop a link to this one and one that just has a drill bit, but this one actually has the drill bit, driver bit, the jig, and just a few screws to get you started. I've actually had this for quite a while and these are perfect for getting into those small spaces or when you build cabinets or shop furniture and you forgot to put that pocket hole on there. If I wanted to put a face frame on my miter station here, and I needed to put pocket holes on there to attach it with, I could obviously bring this over here and attach it just like this, clamp it down. I could drill from it back there just like that, but I could only go so high before I would actually have to take it off of this mounting board. Sweet, ain't it? That's a Pocket Hole King Edition Mask of Pocket Hole Jig with this awesome mounting board. Now, how much easier would it be for me just to bring a small jig over, clamp that in place, and then drill my pocket holes with this? I can get all the way up to the edge with it, all the way down to the bottom. It's just more convenient and it just it's more ideal for getting into small places, especially if you're like me and you forget to put a pocket hole somewhere. The great thing about this jig that I haven't seen on other jigs featured is you can actually remove this piece and get it flush up against the bottom of something. So if I did forget to put pocket holes in here, I could actually come in and put this in later and, and flush it up to the bottom and not have to worry about that lip that has to hang over on most jigs. If you like these style videos, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Number five, by far the most used tool I've ever owned. I've used this thousands of times. It's a Swiss Army knife. This thing is awesome. So a lot of people carry a Leatherman or some type of multi-tool. And while I tried that for a while, those things are just big. And when you put them in your pocket, they weigh you down. They get, I don't know, I just don't like that much weight in the pocket. This, on the other hand, of course, Swiss Army knives make all shapes and sizes, but this one in particular is my favorite. I've had it for years. They're very durable and they have so many functions. Let me show you. First and foremost, <laughs> stupid, but it's got a toothpick. And yes, I've used that a few times. It also has a pair of tweezers if you need to pull out that splinter. You can attach it to a key ring if you wish. On the bottom side is a Phillips head screwdriver. One thing to note about the Phillips head screwdriver is actually when it's extended and you grab it like this, it gives you a little bit of leverage so you can actually put quite a bit of torque on a little screw. And I've used this dozens of times. There's little to no wear on the end of it and I have used it and used it and used it. So it, it'll hold up for a long time. On the bottom side, as well as a, as a scratching awl, I've actually used this multiple times to make a mark on a board when I can't find my pencil. On the top side, you got a flathead screwdriver and a can opener. And then on this side, you have a different style can opener that'll actually punch holes in aluminum, things like that. Got a little nail file with a point. It includes a pocket knife. I use it all the time. You can actually see how gross and crusty it is. It even has a pair of scissors. I actually use these quite regularly too. And they're spring loaded, so it pops right back. And it has tons of pocket lint because I keep that in my pocket. I just love having a Swiss Army knife. It's kind of nostalgic for me. Uh, it's just, they're a great brand. They last forever. I, I can't tell you how many years I've had this uh, Swiss Army knife. Uh, whether I'm actually in the shop or not in the shop, I carry it with me almost everywhere except for travel. Don't take it traveling because they'll take it from you and you won't get it back on the airplane. This is my bonus pick. This is a Start brand combination square. It's insanely expensive. Is it worth it? This thing's $100, sometimes a little less if it's on sale for a six inch combination square. Insane, but it's one of my favorite tools I've ever bought. Is this worth $100? That's really subjective. Most people I think is gonna say no. Let me know in the comments what you think. This piece is actually cast iron and not some type of aluminum or, or just stamped metal. And then this is actually a chrome finish. I wish they would make that stainless because I got a little wood glue on the end. As you see here, it kind of rusted a little bit. One of the cool things about this combination square in particular is on one side, you have one eighth inch increments and one sixteenth. And then on the other side of the blade, you have 32nd and 64th. It's not often that I need something that goes down to 32nd or 64th. But when I need to get precise measurements for whatever reason, this is the tool I grab. I've got all of these other measuring and layout tools available to me. Some are less expensive, some are more expensive, but I keep grabbing this one every time I'm in the shop. I don't regret buying it. I've spent my own money on this tool and it's 
my one of my most used tools in the shop and the way i kind of judge expensive tools is do i ask myself will i regret buying this in six months this was a no i, I don't regret it there's actually a swanson brand that's very similar to this same size six inches I'm not saying you go buy this one, it's specifically depending on your budget, you buy what you like. But I would recommend getting a small six inch combination square like this. They're just extremely handy. I'll put two options in the description, this one and then a more budget friendly one. If you like this type of video, you're gonna love the five tools you didn't know you needed. Until now, volume one, click that box right there. Click in that box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.